Well, Bri, that's the best one of those I've ever seen. Whatever it is. I'm <laughs> um, trying to build a ship. A ship? Yeah. Cool. Well, that's a pretty good looking wood ship. Welcome back to Eberly's Build a House. So where we left off in the last video, Aaron had just finished building the walls of our basement, um, but there were still a few things he had to get done before they poured concrete. So in this video, we're gonna go over preparing to pour the concrete and then pouring concrete. So hope you like it, check it out. So this is the engineered drawing of our house, the structural drawing. It, uh, this is the walls that we're building, the ICF wall, right up to the roof line there. And this is how it's all pulled together. So starting down here, that's the piles. It sits on an optional footing. We put the footing in, just make it a nice level place to work off of. And then our basement course of blocks. And then up to where the floor attaches here. This is that detail, here's blown up a little bit, of these cutouts that we had to put in so that we had a solid place to anchor these bolts into. Same thing on the outside here, there's cutouts there, so we have a solid place to anchor our deck ledger to. So that's how that all goes. This floor takes up a little bit more than a course, so that's why our, our bottom, uh, our basement was seven courses tall and our upstairs is six courses tall with a little four inch spacer. <clears throat> so that's how that all goes together. These guys did a really, really nice job of these drawings for us. Oh, here's an even better, look at that, an even better uh, view of it. So you bolt these two by tens to the cutouts, to the concrete that's in those cutouts. And then the truss just bears right on that two by 10 and the bolts hold the weight then for you in the concrete. Nothing to it. So we've got these cutouts laid out here now. You can kind of see on the wall there. Every 32 inches we've got a cutout. And wherever you see a little rectangle there, those ones didn't work out. I started to hit braces, so I measured from the other direction. And then it worked out better. But you can see the squiggly ones, those won't get cut out, but the rest will. And that is where we're going to bolt that double layer 2x10. And that will hold up this side of the floor truss. The other side will be held on the beam that sits on these piles. So I've got the same thing on both walls here. Got those cutouts there and there. And here, and that will all get a double layer 2x10 bolted to the wall to hold the floor trusses. Same back here. Okay, 
Okay, so here's more of the same on the back side. That will be for our raised deck. As you walk out the back door here, there'll be a deck over top of you. We'll have a kind of a three season sunroom up here. The family just got back from piano lessons. Who's this little girl? How you doing, honey? Oh! Bus busted! <laughs> Stealing Carter's animal crackers! Hi buddy, wanna go up? Come here! Oh yes! Let's go show mom what we're doing here bud! There's tractor Bryden, or Bry farmer Bryden, riding on the tractor. So, so those rectangles mumsy, mm -hmm. those are going to get cut out. And when we and we'll cover them up with plywood, mm -hmm. and then when we pour the concrete and vibrate, those will get filled up all the way to the outside, and that will give us something to bolt our deck to. side of that ledger we've got these cutouts here that's the same thing on the inside right, right in there that's the that hole that's covered up with the blocking that'll get filled up with concrete there goes uncle adam planting trees today but we've got these bolts here these five eighths anchor bolts come out on the outside here you can see them really well on that uh, yeah but that'll get all filled in with concrete and then those bolts can't pull out and then we could really suck this uh, this ledger tight and that's what actually holds it this is all screwed in here to the webbing right now but uh, you know that's that's not a strong connection these things once they're once this is all filled with concrete and that's set up those things can't pull out and then that uh, that ledger can't move and we've got it drilled nice and tight like we had to hammer those through those holes so that's what it looks like up here so it's uh the whole back wall because we have the raised deck is done that way we've got the same thing for the front step it's up over there and then um these dowels i also need to do the same sort of idea here for the garage floor going around there. I haven't uh, haven't laid any of that out yet, but that's on the hit list for today. Hopefully this wind chills out at some point. But yeah. So yeah, that's what that looks like inside the wall. Okay, here's where we're at. Walls are basically done. Strapping is done. Everything's ready to pour. Now I'm just working on our dowels for the floor. 
So these are how the floor ties into the walls. Cut out these holes and cover them up with a piece of plywood so that all gets filled in with concrete and then you shove a chunk of rebar in there. And that will tie the walls to the floor, keep everything nice and solid. And everything is 15M rebar in here, it's overkill, but that's a good problem to have. So that's where we're at. These, uh, behind these boxes here, that's where the floor, tr uh, the floor trusses are going to tie onto. So those are all going to fill up with concrete too. It'll look pretty different when we strip this all. It's all going to, there'll be little pieces of concrete sticking out on the inside all over the place. It's kind of going to be cool. And it's windy again today. Brutal. Whenever it gets warm here in the spring, it gets windy. piles here which aren't drilled yet. So yeah, it's coming along pretty good. We're gonna pour this Monday. Building inspector came, gave us a thumbs up. The new Jura sales guy, he came on Wednesday, gave us a thumbs up. Said everything looks good. So yeah, we're gonna pour this Monday and hopefully everything goes well. Okay, Sunday. Back at the house here, working away. We are getting ready. Final touches for our big pour on uh, tomorrow, Monday. At 15 meters of concrete coming, it should be should be a wild and crazy day. But here, we're just getting our scaffold moved up. This is the height we set it at to build the walls. It's about four and a half feet down, and we're working at kind of chest height once we get to the top. But when we're pouring, you don't want to be pushing that vibrator in and out that high up, or it'll kill kill our shoulders. So we're moving everything up to three feet from the top, and then we're kind of working at waist height. It'll be a lot more, well, a lot easier to do. So pull all the decking off. And the way this stuff is built, you don't have to move the pins. It's awesome. I was kind of worried about that when I decided we needed to move this all up. Because pulling these pins out is not easy and pounding them in, it's not as hard as pulling them out, but it's just a lot of work. You gotta, you know, swing a sledgehammer six or eight times per pin, and there's 50 pins here. So it's a lot of work. But the way these things work, they've got this, uh, this pin here. You pull that pin out. Well, they're connected up into the track right there with the pin. I'll go to one that's finished. <clears throat> So the adjuster attaches to the track up there with that pin. So you pull that pin out and you pull this pin out and this thing slides in and out. And then you can do your fine adjusting with the threads there. So we were able to extend these up a full 18 inches without moving any of those, which was awesome. So we're gonna get a second pin in all of these before we pour tomorrow just to make sure they don't move, especially over here, because under this frost wall, all this ground was excavated. So this isn't, this isn't solid yet. Out here, this has all been here since the ice age. Like this is, the glaciers put this dirt here and it's been here ever since. <laughs> so this, this stuff is, is as hard as it's gonna, ever gonna get. So those pins aren't gonna move. But these ones over here by the frost wall where it was excavated, they are not solid. It's just, that's why they're buried, you know, all the way down there to just above the ground. Yeah. So a nice day today. It's not windy yet. I'm sure it'll come this afternoon when the sun comes up or when it starts getting warmer out. But yeah, that's what we're up to today. Lots of uh, fine little detail work. We've got to close all these up today. That's the dowels for the, uh, the apron outside the house here little concrete pad that slopes away so any water and melt like any rainwater any melting snow 
runs away from the house, not into the house. And then we need to do the same thing over here. We've got the garage grade beam tying in here. And then the garage floor, we need to dowel in around here. So it'll be on this wall, on this wall, and over on this wall. So it'll be those same little holes with the little wood covers, with the rebar. And that will tie the floor to the house, and then the floor shouldn't move. Big day today, concrete's coming at 10 o'clock. It's about three hours from now. Just got a couple tiny little finishing details to finish up. It's a little cool out this morning, but uh, a couple things I haven't showed you yet. Got our little uh, penetrations through the wall here. This will be the electrical panel in the garage and the in-floor heating supply and return for the garage. So we're going to use um, the boiler to heat up the concrete in the garage and that's what will heat the garage. Um, I stuck a couple out that wall and we may or may not use them. I'll just cap them off and stuff them full of rock sole. It's a lot easier to put a hole through the concrete before the concrete is there. Um, we've also got up in this wall that will be our incoming gas and incoming electrical from uh, the service meters over there. They're big because the, the meters are far away. So we need, to, we need to size the wire and gas line accordingly. Usually you'd run um, 250 MCM aluminum for 200 amps. We're gonna probably have to run 350s or 500s to get uh, 200 amps from that distance. And the plumber told me we need a two inch gas line where normally you'd need probably a one inch or inch and a quarter to do a house this size, but no big deal. You know, just a little bit, uh, a little bit larger pipe, a little bit larger wire, nothing too major. Another cool little detail here <clears throat> we put in yesterday. I really like how the engineer designed this here, but uh, under the door, there are these long pieces of rebar that extend all the way under the door and all the way out there. And the way these are done, hope you can see this okay. But inside there, there's this stirrup here. And we installed those in the frost wall. You saw those earlier probably. And there's this bar on top of the stirrup that ties to it. And these, these bars, go under that bar which goes under that bar so for this thing to ever pull up it would basically have to pull the whole frost wall up it it can't move <clears throat> and that's what ties the pad outside and the floor inside so that's a really awesome design that he uh, put together there he called for two i put three in what the heck right easy to do but yeah, we are ready to rock here today. It's a big day today. Lots of concrete coming, lots of guys coming. It's gonna be it's gonna be crazy right here. So we'll get some time lapse of this. Hopefully, I can get the drone up in the air. Candace has to work today. I was hoping uh, we can both be here to get some more of this, but we'll see how it goes. Here comes the first truck. Way over there. There's cousin Dylan.
check this other one here again. It's like less than an eighth.